Just as Tiny Bhutan launched its first five-year development plan in 1961, a similar-sized country in Europe, Denmark, was gearing up to create a national fund to support countries like Bhutan in their development efforts. Then, neither country, 6,800 kilometers apart, had heard of the other. Yet, East met West in this intriguing development friendship that spanned more than three decades. This is the story of that friendship. Denmark's first assistance to Bhutan came in 1978 when it supported the National Seed Project through the Food and Agriculture Organization. Seven years later, in 1985, formal diplomatic ties were established and in 1989, Denmark selected Bhutan as a program country for its assistance. What made Bhutan turn to Denmark, a country unknown to Bhutan even in the 80s? And what made Denmark respond? We wanted to have a partnership first with the smaller nations. It was the many similarities. Both were similar in size, both were kingdoms, and both valued happiness for their citizens. The collaboration between Bhutan and Denmark started actually in the 80s when there were several projects supported um, by Denmark in Bhutan, but channeled through multilateral organizations such as UNICEF. Key areas such as uh, revenues and customs, judiciary support to the judiciary, um, a lot of uh, support to agriculture, um, land use planning was one of the big early projects and subsequently followed by a number of environmental um, projects. In the beginning, Support focused on health, water supply and sanitation. This later shifted to institutional strengthening, mostly through human resource development. From the start, Danish assistance focused on certain priority sectors recognized by both countries, such as health and education, environment, urban development, good governance, judiciary, media and civil society. The most significant Danish intervention came as Bhutan prepared to make the transition to democratic constitutional monarchy. Denmark supported all vital institutions of a democratic system. Indeed, most Bhutanese officials who have handled Danish support recall its three important cornerstones. Aligned to Bhutan's policies and priorities, flexible and no strings attached. Since 1989, Bhutan has made huge strides. Among others, poverty fell from 36.3% in 2000 to 12% in 2012. GDP increased from 521 USD to 2500 USD, the highest in South Asia. Domestic revenue increased from new 980 million to more than 17 billion in 2012-2013. Life expectancy improved from 51 years to 67 years. Under one mortality dropped from 92 to 36. Maternal mortality fell from 560 to 86. Access to improved sanitation increased to 81%. Primary enrollment increased to almost 100%. Bhutan's ranking on Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index moved from 46 in 2007 to 31 last year. Denmark contributed significantly to these achievements and from a modest start, Denmark became Bhutan's second largest bilateral donor. These achievements, combined with Denmark's focus on poorer nations, led the two nations to transition from development aid to continued partnership in other areas of mutual interest. The friendship between the two countries goes beyond the idea of traditional development cooperation. As people familiar with the Bhutan-Denmark story would say, 
Denmark did not choose Bhutan. Instead, Bhutan sought Denmark. Even as Denmark's official development assistant ends, Bhutan and Denmark have committed to continue their relationship beyond development aid. On June 21st, 2012, Bhutan and Denmark signed the Framework for Continued danish bhutanese Partnership on the sidelines of the Rio Plus Summit in Brazil. This framework will provide the basis for continued collaboration between the two countries from 2015 in global security, democracy, good governance, human rights, culture, environment and climate change. During my service with the Royal Government in the previous years, I have had a lot of associations with Danish-supported programs in Bhutan. Our relationship with Denmark will continue to be good. We have benefited tremendously and we have lots of appreciation to the government of Denmark. And I think the kind of relationship that we are developing now is only maturing. It is maturing into something that will be much more sustainable in the long run. And that's the way it should be. Oh. Uh -huh.